These squash plants have produced $936 worth of food this year. This bed of kale, $549 worth of food. And this bed of salad greens has already grown $840 worth of shallots this year. In this video, I'm gonna show you how five 50-foot beds just like this on the farm have produced $4,495 worth of food this year and how the same technique can grow $1,572 worth of food in this 220 square foot garden. I'm Zach Buckle. I own a half acre vegetable farm in Cody, Wyoming. We've sold over $70,000 in food this year and are projected to sell $100,000 by the end of the year. And if you're serious about growing food in your backyard in a garden just like this, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I go over how I set up this exact garden in four easy steps. So in this first bed, we grew 120 pounds of shallots from May 15th to about August 25th. Shallots just like these. And we seeded the shallots around March 1st, transplanted around May 15th. Then they grew all season. We harvested around late August and then cured them up and now they look like this. So as soon as August 25th happened, we reseeded with this Tokyo Bacana and mustard green salad mix that we're gonna use for our fall salad mix. And so 120 pounds of shallots for me is worth about $7 a pound because shallots at the store are worth about $5 a pound. I'm gonna charge seven because mine are much higher quality, much fresher. And I do know that from experience because the first one I cut into, I cried my eyes out. And uh, these will last for at least a year. They have one of the nicest shelf lives of anything we grow on the farm in a year in room temperature once they're cured like this these are more valuable than gold and they're just a really concentrated onion flavor if you've ever if you've never used shallots before they're very popular in french and european cooking for sauces but um you don't need as many as onions in your dishes you need a lot less because the flavor is so concentrated that's why they're worth more um, but 120 pounds is not bad. I want to get better in the future. Um, there's a lot to growing onions and shallots, but the bottom line is we got a really nice yield out of this bed by August 25th. And now we got a second crop that's pretty much mature now. That's going to give us about 30 pounds at least of salad greens, which for me is worth somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 because we're gonna be selling it between nine to $10 a pound at the market. And so most salad greens at the store, if you're buying a five ounce box, it's worth about $10 a pound. You know, if you buy it in bulk, you're gonna be paying $5 a pound and that's definitely a better price. But our organic salad mix at the store is worth pretty close to that number. So that's a lot of value here in one 50 foot bed. And each one of these 50 foot beds is only 125 square feet. To give you some context, if you're thinking about your garden in your backyard, 125 square feet, most people have a garden that's probably 250 square feet. So this is like half the size of your garden. And we've grown just over $1,100 worth of food so far this year in this bed alone. This bed of radishes was seeded around September 3rd, and it's just now coming in. We're gonna be harvesting it a little bit at a time for the next two, three weeks. And it was followed by a bed of carrots that I seeded around May 25th and probably harvested around August 25th. And so that first bed of carrots yielded about 140 pounds um, and that was because we harvested it a little early because I wanted to get a second crop because two crops is more total food than one crop. Even if I let that carrot bed grow to horse carrot size, it still wouldn't have yielded as much food as if I got two crops. So the first bed was in the ground. The first crop was in the ground from May 25th to around August 25th. So that's around 90 days and the second crop started around september 3rd and we're going to be harvesting this for the next couple weeks so that first 140 pounds of carrots is worth 
$420 because we sell carrots for $3 a pound at the market. Organic carrots at the store are around that price now, uh, especially bunched carrots. Bunched carrots are probably worth more, but most of the carrots we sell are bunched. And the so the value of that first crop is $420. This bed will yield around 150, 140 bunches of radishes. And we sell those for $3 a bunch or $5 a pound if we break them down. So that's about $400-ish. So this bed has yielded about $800 worth of food. Not quite as many as the other ones, but most of that is because the carrot bed wasn't as good as some of our other carrot beds. Um, you know, sometimes things don't go according to plan, but that's $800 worth of food in this bed alone. Now, this bed of beets is the third crop that we've had in this bed this season, which is pretty incredible for our season because it's really cold here in Wyoming. We have 120 days to grow that's frost free, which is not a guarantee by any means. Um, so I'm pretty impressed with that. And the way that we've accomplished that is transplants. So the first crop we had in here was green onions, just like this. Now, the way we do green onions on the farm is we transplant them with the paper pot transplanter, which is sort of a fancy market gardening tool that you're probably not gonna use in your garden. But you could do the same thing with hand transplants. You just need some 128 or 72 plant cells, um, which I could leave a link to in the description. You need some six cells actually. Um, I'm so used to farming terms. You need to use a, a six cell plant tray and you can hand seed green onions all the time. You put like eight to 10 seeds in each cell and grow them in your nursery or on your windowsill because that's exactly what we do here only we do it on a way bigger scale. And then you transplant those in the spring. So by around May 25th or so, we had a bed of green onions that were about half as big as this transplanted in here. And they grow way faster that way. You know, green onions from seed to harvest are around 70 days. So if you grow them as a transplant, you could shave about 30 days off of that growing time. So in about 40 days, we had about 200 bunches come out of this bed, something like that. And that could be a really improved with a whole bunch of stuff that I don't have time to explain right now, but 200 bunches is nothing to sneeze at, right? 200 bunches of green onions is quite a bit. And so by around, uh, July 4th or something, uh, maybe mid-July, because it was probably a little slower than that. Uh, we, re we pulled all those green onions and then we reseeded it to arugula, which is a spicy salad green. I've talked about it in a couple of my videos. We grow a ton of that on the farm. Um, and that grows in about 21 days, you get a harvest. And then maybe in another eight days, you get another harvest of, of salad greens. You know, you're probably not gonna be eating 10 to 20 pounds of arugula in your garden. But the point is, if you got a bare spot in your garden that you just harvested some green onions, you could throw some seeds of arugula in there or your other favorite salad green, and it'll grow in about the same time. Pretty much all hand seeded, direct seeded salad greens like that Tokyo Bacana I just talked about are fast and you can eat them fast and then replant to something else, you know, just to have some fresh, crunchy, salad-y things. You could do that with lettuce too. You know, there's, you could do, the same thing I talk about with arugula, you could do with Tokyo Bacana, lettuce, um, mustard greens. Um, there's about 10 or 20 different salad greens you can hand seed like that that will grow really fast, add some crunch to your salads or sandwiches or whatever, and you got fresh salad all the time. You know, you could just hand seed most of your salad directly in the ground. You don't even have to start them as plants in your nursery. But anyway, so we had the beets or the uh, green onions, 200 bunches at the store. A bunch of green onions is about $2. We sell ours at the market for about three, but let's just say they're worth $2. So that 200 bunches is now brought us $400 worth of food in this bed. Then we hand seed or we seeded arugula. Arugula on a bed like this yields about 
30-ish total, 30 to 40 pounds of greens, depending on what happens, because sometimes it bolts and you lose the crop. So that's worth roughly, I'm gonna say $300, just to be conservative, because we sell a lot of it retail at $10 a pound, and then a lot of it wholesale at seven. So we usually get in the neighborhood of 40 pounds. So I'm just gonna rough, rough guess, it's $300 of value there. So we're at $700 total and now we as soon as that arugula was done and around um well, let's say mid-august i'm kind of guessing here because i don't have exact records for all of this we do so much transplanting and harvesting on the farm it's hard to track every single crop but i just know roughly the timing so around mid-august we came and hand transplanted these beets that were about uh three weeks old and they were actually pretty bad transplants because I don't have a very good nursery, but it did shave a couple weeks off their growth time. And now we're at October 10th and uh, we already started harvesting beets from this bed. We've harvested 25 bunches and I'm gathering, we're gonna probably harvest about a hundred bunches out of this bed by the time the real cold sets in. And we kind of got lucky with that. That's not something that we could do every single time, but we also had some things go wrong. Next year, when I have better infrastructure, it'll be easier to get these kinds of numbers even earlier in the season. But I'm lucky that we've had a warm fall and we're probably still gonna get another 75 bunches out of here. So 100 bunches, we sell them at the market for $3 or $4 a bunch, but wholesale we sell them three. So let's just say that 100 bunches is gonna yield $3 per bunch on average. So that's another $300. That's $1,000 worth of food in this one bed. So this bed is summer squash, AKA zucchini. I just call it summer squash because I think it's fancier and sells better. Uh, but basically it's zucchini. It's this yellow squash mixed with patty pan and regular old green zucchini. So not really the most exciting vegetable, but in, you know a lot of people have tried this in their garden. Um, and we got all sorts of disease problems and there's already been a frost so we've actually lost some of the plants, but they're still producing. We're still gonna get a crop for another week or two. This has produced 312 pounds of zucchini since about late, like July 25th. That's worth $936 minimum. We actually sell it for $4 a pound. So it's, for me at the retail price, it's worth about, um, oh, what is that? Like. I can't do the math in my head right now, but it's like uh, 1040 or something or like close to $1,100. But let's just say it's worth $936, $3 a pound. You know, that's a lot of food. Um, so if you had one of these plants in your garden, that's tons of food over the course of an entire season and you only have to plant it once. You know, everything I've talked to up at this point has been involving ripping a plant out and putting a new plant in. This. Plant one time, harvest every week. You just stay on top of the harvesting. You got a constant supply of food. And I actually have heard people will grow these out to almost like a winter squash size and store them. I don't know if that's something I would like to try, but uh, it's an option, you know. Um, for me, zucchini doesn't have a long shelf life in the fridge, but it's nice fresh in summer you know, vegetable dishes, pasta dishes. That's, you know, July 25th to today is October 10th. So that is um, like 10 weeks of food production from one plant, one seed, you know, one seed put in a starter tray that you do in like, you don't even need to seed zucchini until like May because it only needs like two, three weeks in that little plant start tray. And then you put that plant in the ground like first week in June or something, that's one seed that's producing you food every week for almost three months. We got pretty lucky right now because we haven't had that hard of a frost yet. And you know, normally we're not gonna get zucchini this late in the season in Wyoming at least. But if you're in a warmer climate, you probably will, but just a huge producer. And uh, you don't need that much of it. It's a huge producer in a small space. And last but definitely not least is everybody's favorite vegetable, kale. I love kale, but I know it's a hard sell for a lot of people because of the bitterness, but I genuinely love kale. I would eat it uh, 
every day if I had the ability to. But anyway, I actually do, but um, I don't actually eat it every day. But I do have a t-shirt that says, oh, kale, yeah, which I wear on very special occasions. And uh, today apparently is not special enough because I forgot to wear it. But the bottom line is, this one 50 foot bed of kale, I actually have three beds. So I basically took the total yields so far this year, divided it by three. One of these beds of kale has produced $540 worth of food so far this year. And I say so far because you see how full these plants are? We're gonna keep them like this and keep harvesting probably into December. So I'm guessing we'll probably have about $800 worth of food produced by December once we harvest all this, because there's a truckload more um, here. But I know that this takes deep cold really well. So we're gonna keep harvesting it, you know, pretty late into the season because it can take a pretty heavy frost, you know, at least down to 20 degrees or something. So kale is another one that you just plant once and you just keep harvesting it over and over and over and over again. Um, I have planted this, we probably seeded this kale around mid-April in our nursery, planted it May 15th or so in this plant spacing, which is about 15 inches apart. And it started really pumping around 4th of July. We started getting, you know, 70, 80 bunches a week per bed, or that would be like, we harvest one whole bed, then move on to the next bed and move on to the next bed. But the bottom line is one bed has produced probably around, uh, what's 540 divided by three? That's uh, about 180 bunches so far. And it's October 10th. And I guarantee you there's at least another 80 bunches in here. So that's probably gonna be around 260, 300 bunches by the time the year is over. Um, that's a lot of kale. Now you have to like kale for that to be exciting to you. And I do like kale. so you probably don't need that many plants in your garden. You know, we did four plants in our garden. It was way too much. Even for me, I couldn't eat that much. Two plants is probably more than enough for an entire family for a huge kale dinner uh, on regular basis. You know, you could be taking two, three bunches a week or something like that. You know, you have to like kale, but one plant would probably be enough. And the bottom line is it takes up very little space and produces a lot of food. That's the whole moral of this video is lots of food in a very small space. And so $540 is nothing to sneeze at. And if you are a kale person and you're buying that at the store, that's gonna save you some money. Um, and you could freeze kale too. It's, it's a very useful vegetable, not only because of the yields I'm talking about, but because it's so cold hardy. It's a vegetable you can eat a very wide time of year. You know, this one, you could be harvesting it in 4th of July, through December in almost every climate. That's a big deal. And it gets way better once it's colder. It's way sweeter and more delicious once it starts getting real good frosts. So, I mean, in some, most climates, you could probably harvest this straight through the winter, no problem. In my climate, it's a little tough. Once it gets below zero, it doesn't do so good. We have it in our greenhouses and we'll probably be harvesting it through January, but even there I've had problems. But it's really, really cold hardy. So that's got a lot of value to me. Um, and it should for you also, depend if you're in the Northern climates. So $540, but with a lot more to come. So the whole point of this video is to point out that if you buy any of those crops that I mentioned in this video, or turnips, sugar snap peas, cucumbers, chard, basil, cilantro, dill, parsley, celery, and many more that I haven't even tried myself, you could be saving a ton of money annually on groceries if you grew it yourself. And I should mention that the crops that I've talked about in this video are only the ones that I personally have experience with. There are other ones out there that produce a lot of food in a small space, and it might depend on your climate also. But in Wyoming, in a zone 4B slash 5A, those have worked really well for me and probably will work for you if you're anywhere in the neighborhood of a zone five or a six. Probably seven, that's gonna start changing because I don't know what works well in that climate. But in the Northern cold climates, I know everything I've talked about in this video produces a truckload in a really small space. And another one I forgot to mention is cabbage. There's a cabbage 
called Omero, I believe, uh, from Johnny's that you can grow six really nice heads of cabbage in about a space this big, uh, two feet by two and a half feet. You can grow six habit cabbage, which is about 12 pounds of cabbage in about 70 days in your growing season. We've been experimenting with that and the green one works. I can't remember the variety off the top of my head, but that's a great one. But you do have to be a little selective with your crops. That's kind of what I'm talking about through all my videos is selecting the right crops. You know, stuff like this delicious French Charentaise melon is probably not going to be as valuable to you if you want to turn your backyard into a grocery store. But if you stick to the crops that I'm talking about, you can easily turn your backyard into a grocery store pretty much no matter what size it is. You know, this garden has only 220 square foot of growing space. Actually, we could double that if we wanted to, but my family only wants this much space to grow in. They don't want to deal with much more than that. And I'm not really maintaining this very much myself. So this is a really low effort version of what I'm talking about. I, if, if this was mine, I would double the amount of beds and turn it into 440 square feet of space. And just for perspective, the five beds that I talked about in this video total to 625 square feet of space. So that's about $4,500 in crop value from 625 square feet. If we turned this 220 square feet of growing space into high productive, vegetables like i met, talked about in this video where you have two crops at least or one really high productive crop through the throughout the season it would be about fifteen hundred and sixty dollars in crop value that you would have spent at the store if you bought it or the market so that's the reason i bring up dollars is because everybody understands dollars not letting everybody understands what you know 100 pounds of carrots looks like in a field but dollars is something real that you would be spending at the store if you bought that stuff. You know, so the bottom line is you're gonna save a ton of money on groceries if you grow all of these crops and you eat them. You know, hopefully you are interested in eating healthy stuff like all of that. And a lot of that stuff can be stored through the winter. Beets, carrots, radishes even, turnips can be stored for months in the fridge. Um, if you have a root cellar, it can be stored for months there. There's all sorts of techniques on storing this stuff. Those shallots I mentioned, they are good for a year. I have had them for a year. We, we actually just ate shit, 2023 shallots I ate a month ago, which would have been like September 10th. So they're over a year old and they're still totally fine. There's a lot to this and we grew them in exactly the way I'm talking about in this video. And as a bonus plan, if you grow too much of any of those crops, you could just sell the surplus at a local farmer's market. Almost everybody has a small farmer's market nearby where you could probably sign up for a weekend or two to sell the surplus and make a little bit of extra money. You know, I'm not suggesting that you turn into a market farmer like me because that is ridiculously hard, requires a lot of money and infrastructure that you probably don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But selling your surplus is not a big deal. People do that all the time around here. And, or you could just give it away. You know, there's really not a lot of harm that's gonna come from you growing too much food. But the techniques that I'm talking about of growing a crop that's half grown as a transplant and then harvested and replanted to something else, keeping your land as an assembly line of food doubles the amount of food you can grow in the same space. Just like this. This soil can grow two crops a year minimum. If I'm really good, I could grow three, even in my climate. It just takes a little bit of discipline and staying on top of my seeding, planting, and harvesting dates. So if any of this is making sense, comment food down below and leave me some thoughts on what I'm saying if, if it is making sense, because I'd love to start a conversation about this with people who are passionate about growing food just like me. And if you're serious about growing food and turning your backyard into a grocery store, please 
check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I go over how I set up this exact garden in four easy steps. It's just a simple Microsoft Word document with some links to a few of the items that I bought to start it, but I really didn't buy many items at all. And you could start your gardening journey and food production journey as soon as next season pretty much because it is pretty much the end of the season but you could spend all winter planning it out and i'd love to get you started on growing your own food hope you enjoyed this one and i will see you in the next one